Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here in Louisville, Kentucky, St. Stephen Baptist Church with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments with the master on a daily basis. Thank you for joining me today as we continue our theme that we began on Monday, and that is why, God, why, why? We don't always understand the why question, but we understand the where question. And the where question is, where is God in the midst of it? Uh, Psalms 34, verse 18, we looked at it yesterday. Let's look at it again. Uh, it says, uh, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. Where is God? God is close to the brokenhearted uh, and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Have you ever had something that just crushed your spirit? God saves us when we are crushed in spirit. Now, when bad things happen to us, when the suffering comes, the pain comes, the agony, the injustices of life come to us, it's not what happens always to us, but it's how we respond to what happens to us. We can't control what people do and what life does. Can't control that. But we can control how we will respond to what life does to us. The attitude that we bring is critically important. Attitude and altitude rhyme. And they should rhyme because our attitude determines our altitude, whether that attitude is high or low, to some degree depends on the attitude that we have. It's how we respond to life, life's pains. And there are four basic responses. And I've used these four responses, each one of them. And you have used them, each one of them. Let me give them to you. The first one is repress it. Repress it which is to say when something happens that breaks our heart, crushes our spirit, we repress it, we don't deal with it, we ignore it, we do something to deflect our attention away from it because we don't wanna to have to deal with the pain. And that never works because it will always come back to haunt you. Many of us are dealing with things today that we should have dealt with many years ago. And so when something bad happens, that's really not that bad. And we wonder, why am I responding the way I'm responding? I mean, it was it hurt me, but it was not so devastating that I should be acting like I'm acting. But what you perhaps don't realize is that the pain that you're dealing with today, something bad that happened today, even that it might seem small, may have triggered some repressed uh, pain that you had that you didn't deal with many years ago. So you're really having to do some work, some real um, resolution of, of problems, some work based on some troubles that you had many, many years ago. Maybe you didn't grieve the death of somebody, you just repressed it. Maybe you didn't uh, address uh, some, some betrayal or some violation that was committed against you, you just repressed it. And there's all different kinds of ways we can repress things. You can repress things through anything that alters your mind away from something, alcohol, drugs, sex, anything that can repress it. That's one of the responses. All of us have done repression to pain, but it never works. The second is rehearse it. We don't repress it, we rehearse it. In other words, we just won't let it go. Everybody we talk to all day long, we keep telling people what someone did to us as though we're the only person in the history of the world who's been hurt, who's been betrayed, who's been belittled, who's been devalued. So we won't let it go. We just go over and over and over again. And we park our emotions at some event that has long passed because we rehearse it, repress it, rehearse it. Here's another one, resent it resent it. We're angry. We're bitter. We're like a porcupine. You know what a porcupine has? A porcupine has quills and anybody gets close to a porcupine gets stuck. And we have a porcupine complex. We resent it and it shows in our spirit and our attitude. It poisons us. Always remember that hate is a cancer that mars the container. So we repress it. We rehearse it. We resent it. Those responses are not healthy responses. But here's a fourth response that is a healthy response. It's not that we repress it, not that we rehearse it, not that we resent it. Instead, we release it. We release it. 
We release it to God in prayer and we say, God, I surrender this to you. Amen. That's why the the uh, serenity prayer is so important. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the, 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 the courage to change the things I can and the wisdom uh, to know the difference. I like that serenity prayer, but we're going to go over that one day in our powerful points to ponder. But let me tell you something. When you pray that prayer, be more specific. Don't pray the serenity prayer by saying, Lord, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. Be specific. Say something like this. God, grant me the serenity to accept the fact that I can't change my spouse. God, grant me the serenity to accept the fact, grant me the serenity to accept the fact that I cannot get this person to love me, to act right. Help me to accept it. Be very specific. God, grant me this serenity to accept the things I cannot change. And then what that thing is. The wisdom to know and the and the, the courage to change the things I can, and then be specific about the thing that you can change. Uh, the courage to change, for example, my attitude. That's being specific, and the wisdom to know the difference. Because when it comes to the pains of life, if you don't repress it, rehearse it, resent it, but release it to God in prayer, guess what God can do? When you release it, God can reverse it. You don't repress it, rehearse it, resent it, release it, and watch God re re reverse it. It is critical in life, my brothers and sisters, that when you are brokenhearted and crushed, that you, you accept it. Some things have to be accepted. So let me spell out accepting it to you. This is what I mean by accepting it. And you write this down. You get this in your spirit. Put it somewhere conspicuous because you're going to need this. Somebody needs it right now. A, admit to the pain. Remember Psalm 34, verse 18, he says, God is close to the brokenhearted, saves those who have a crushed spirit. God calls it brokenheartedness. God calls it crushed in spirit. If God names it brokenhearted, don't you act like, oh, I'm okay. I'm okay. I know uh, I can think of one particular person. Anytime they have a pain or anytime something's bad, they respond by not admitting it. they are in denial. They have this uh, kind of Hindu thing going on, this mind science going on and say, I don't accept that. What do you mean you don't accept it? It's real. You're brokenhearted. You're crushed in spirit. You cannot fix what you will not face. Admit to the pain. C, claim God's acceptance. When somebody breaks your heart, please know that God loves you. You can't claim everybody's acceptance. Everybody won't accept you. But if God accepts you, that's all that matters. Isaiah 54 in verse 10 says this, for the mountains may depart and the hills disappear, but my kindness will never leave you. My promise of peace for you will never be broken, says the Lord who has mercy upon you. And the key word, amen, is never. My promise of peace for you will never be broken. You claim God's acceptance when you're brokenhearted. The second C, choose to forgive. Choose to forgive. Choose to forgive because you don't want to hold on. The forgiveness is not for the person who hurt you. The forgiveness is the person for yourself. Forgiveness does not mean amnesia. It does not mean to act like it did not happen. Uh, forgiveness means that I'm in a situation where it hurt me, but I'm going to move on. That's what it means. It, doesn't mean, it means you're not going to park your emotions. Colossians 3.13 says this, uh, be gentle and ready to forgive. Never hold grudges. Remember the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Admit to the pain Claim God's acceptance, choose to forgive, and then E, expect to get better. Expect to get better. And this is all sequential because you can't get to E where you're going to expect to get better if you don't choose to forgive, if you don't, if you don't claim God's acceptance, and if you don't admit God's pain. Admit to the pain, excuse me. Expect to get better. First Peter chapter one, verse six and seven. This is your scripture. This is your, someone's scripture. So be truly glad there is wonderful joy ahead. And you read the rest of the verses, the, this verse in your leisure. Even though the going is rough for a while down here, these trials are only a test. 
your faith to see whether or not uh, it is strong or pure. It's being tested as fire, tests gold and purifies it. And your faith is far more precious to God than gold. So if your faith remains strong after you're being tried in the test tube of fiery trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day of his return. But look at verse six again. So be truly glad there is wonderful joy ahead. <clears throat> Expect to get better. <clears throat> Keep telling yourself, this too will pass. I claim the word. I expect to get better. There's wonderful joy ahead. So expect to get better. E is expect to get better. And then P, watch this, plant scripture in your mind. Plant scripture in your mind. Romans chapter 12, verse 2, because it's a battle of the mind. It's a battle of the mind. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Plant scripture in your mind. A, admit to the pain. C, claim God's acceptance. Uh, C, choose to forgive. E, expect to get better. P, plant scripture in your mind. You ready? Here's the T. You ready? Here it comes. Time your recovery. I cannot emphasize that enough. Grieve, but consciously, intentionally say, that on a particular day in the future, put it on your calendar, I'm moving on. I'm crying, I'm gonna think about it, I've had time to deal with this, but I'm moving on. For example, um, my birthday is it's July the 15th. And let's just say that uh, I'm hurting right now. And I've been hurting, let's say, since December of 2020. Well, that's what, seven, eight months? So eight months is long enough. It's time to move on. Uh, it is what it is. Uh, I don't like it, but it is what it is. So what I tell myself in terms of timelining my recovery is that I put a big circle around July the 15th. And I say, I'm going to cry. I'm going to grieve. I'm going to be angry. I'm going to be upset, justifiably so, until July the 15th. But when July the 15th comes, I'm moving on. And you've got to intentionally timeline your recovery. E, encourage others. You get blessed when you encourage other people. So encourage other people. Second Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 and 4 says this. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is our merciful Father and the source of our comfort. He comforts us in all of our troubles so that we can comfort others. Encourage others admit to the pain, claim God's acceptance, choose to forgive, expect to get better, plant scripture in your mind, timeline your recovery, encourage others, and then finally D, draw on Christ's power. Philippians 4, 13 reads, you know what it says, I can do all this through him who gives me strength. All what? Go back to it. I can do this. Admit to the pain. Claim God's acceptance. Choose to forgive. Expect to get better. Plant scripture in my mind. Timeline my recovery. Encourage others. Draw on Christ's power. How would you grade yourself on a one to ten on each one of those letters? To the degree that you can get an A on those letters is to the degree that you're going to get back, not just to your old self, but to your best self, because that's what the goal is, to get to your best self. And God allows some things to happen. Why? Because God wants to take your life to a, another level. And sometimes your, 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 your haters are your elevators. It is the problems of life that propel you in life. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word today. Bless your people. Help us, oh God, to learn the principles from this teaching today and not just hear it, but write it down and write it in our heart and begin to adjust our lives to it. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you for being with me today on another powerful point to ponder. Look, if you don't have a church home, we encourage you to become a part of Saints TV Church. You become a digital member regardless of where you are throughout the world. Contact us here, St. Stephen Church, New Start. That's our email, newstart at sclive.org. 
Well, peace and blessings until you. I hope you have a blessed day. But until we come together tomorrow, don't forget protocol during COVID-19. And that is, don't forget to stay safe, stay sane, and stay masked. Peace and blessings. See you tomorrow.